Okay, so today I want to talk to you about a new group of tests called the G-Test or more generally log likelihood. Um, the G-Test is, is a kind of a subset of log likelihood, at least that's the way I think of it. Um, log likelihood tests, uh, to put them in perspective, let's revisit our bestiary of kinds of tests in this course. So we have independent and dependent variables and these can be nominal or they can be continuous. And we sort of proceeded from the most common kinds of analyses to less common kinds of analyses starting with ANOVA and we moved on to regression, and we had ANCOVA, which is kind of in between these two, in the sense that it has a mixture of uh, independent uh, variables, types, nominal and continuous. And then we just call it, we uh, moved from regression to logistic regression. We found that to be very useful in biological kinds of problems. And finally, um, I want to fill in the last box. Log likelihood. So almost any time you are tempted to use a chi-square test, um, think about using log likelihood instead. So what exactly is it? What kind of question are we talking about? Well, obviously from this table, we have a nominal independent variable and a nominal dependent variable. And again, we can have multiple nominal independent variables uh, in, a, in a nominal dependent variable. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, this one's kind of a, another little human example. Does the sex of an individual influence whether their ring finger is longer than their index finger. Okay, so you can think of that last part as a probability uh, of the ring finger being longer than the index finger. So, you know, we can set this up kind of like a chi-squared. So we have our independent variable sex, male versus female. And we could have the ring finger longer than the index finger, or we could have the ring finger shorter than the index finger. So I suppose if we hold this up here, we can take a look. Um, you know, mine's pretty close. I guess in my case, my index finger is longer than my ring finger. And so um, we can put me down for uh, ring finger, index finger longer than ring finger. I would be there. And we could, you know, census a population and tally up results. People fall into these classes. And, you know, pretty soon we would have some statistics. Um, and, and this is kind of interesting to think about um, right here. So we're filling out this table as we're censusing our population. What is our what is our SAS jump data set look like here, right? Um, so you know we can sum these up. We have a three and we have a seven, and we have a nine and we have a twelve um, in these boxes with my little example. And um, and so what is our SAS jump data set? Well, it actually looks like sex is going to be one column. And then we're going to have ring finger greater than index finger question mark. And so for example, for me, I would be here. I was the first one there. I am male and my ring finger was not longer than my index finger. So I would be a no there. And again, over here, you know, someone would be male and their ring finger was greater than their index finger, so that would be a yes. 
and etc. on down through our entire population and we would have, what do I have here, 10 plus 21, 31 individuals, 31 rows of data that I've collected here. Okay, so that would be the kind of data I have. Um, when you do chi-square and you, when you first learn it, you probably think of your data as these points because you're actually um, going to uh, use those in the calculations. And in fact, um, we will do that too today when I show you kind of the mechanics of the log likelihood calculation. Um, but when you put the data in the jump, remember that you have however many observations you have here, and we have the individuals classified by male or female, and by, in this case, no or yes, depending upon which way you put those around. Okay, so um, you don't put in 3, 7, 9, and 12 in a jump and have it do the answer based on that. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do an example of a table like this with independent and dependent variables. Hello, it's our blue jay. We have um, ring finger less than index, uh, ring finger greater than index, and um, I'm going to go ahead and put in some numbers here. So let's say we've done our tally. We have 7, 6, 4, and 10. All right, so I'm going to give these names A, uh, B, C, and D. All right, and we will um, do some summations, which we're going to use here as well. Um, so we have 13, um, 14, 16, and 11. And then we have a total of 27, which is our N. Okay? So, um, we actually calculate this um, in a number of steps. So, first of all, quantity 1 that we need to calculate is the summation of what I'm going to call F, L, and F. And that's these basic frequencies that are in our cells of our design. Okay. They're running into trouble here with power. So we're going to have um, 7 log 7 plus 6 log 6 plus 4 log 4 plus 10 log 10. And if you um, quickly do that calculation, you're going to see that's 52.9430. You didn't do that that fast? I had it all calculated ahead of time. Our next quantity is going to be the summation of these frequencies where we have the rows and columns. Okay, so the same frequencies, but basically uh, A plus B times the log of A plus B um, plus C plus D times the log of C plus D plus A plus C times the log of A plus C plus uh, B plus D times the log of B plus D. So it's just the rows in column sum. And um, so you can see what I've got is 13 log 13 plus 14 log 14 plus uh, 11 log 11 plus 16 log 16 which is obviously 141.0294 so that's the second quantity we're going to need the third quantity we're going to need is n log n okay so that's this n our total n and so we have 27 log 27. 
which is very clearly 88.9876. That's our quantity 3. All right, now, how do we get our g value, or our log likelihood? g equals 2 times quantity 1 minus quantity 2 plus quantity 3. Hmm. So we have 2 times 52.9430 minus 141.0294 might seem like I'm carrying a lot of digits here but you actually can need those sometimes um, plus uh, quantity 388.9876 which equals um, exactly 1.8022. So our g value is 1.8022. Now g is distributed as chi-square. So we actually use a chi-square table to look up the statistical significance of that g. Now our degrees of freedom in this case is the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So in this case we have two minus one times two minus one or one degree of freedom. So we want to look up a chi-squared critical value 0.05 uh, with one degree of freedom, and we can look that up in a table, and we see that that's 3.841. I just looked that up in a table. You can look up online if you want. There are plenty of chi-square tables online. Um, so, and then we compare our g, our observed g, to this critical value. Now, because our g is less than this g, our g is less then the critical value. So it is not significant. Okay? So large G means more significant, small G means less significant. And this is our critical value that we want to compare our observed G to. And it's not significant. Okay, so um, how do we actually do this? Of course, we use some program like SAS Jump to perform the analysis, and we look up the exact p-value that's associated with that exact g because we realize that um, it's not good enough anymore to just give a particular range of p-values. We want we don't want to know that p is less than or more than 0.05, we want to know what the exact p-value is. So we do that in SAS jump. So there's basic calculation of g, and um, the purpose is to come up with a statistical test for whether the probability of having ring finger length greater than uh, index finger length is differs among sexes. Very simple question, nominal x, nominal y, and um, we've now tested that. Voila.